Hey guys, how are you? I can't believe it's Thursday again. I don't know where the week went. Um, <laughs> but here we are, Thursday again. Another Facebook Live for you. And happy Thursday. It's, it's rainy and a little chilly here. I like yesterday's weather better. Don't mind me, I'm drinking a yummy green smoothie. It is not cold, it is room temperature. And in it I have water, coconut milk, well it's really coconut cream, so real thick, dense, just coconut cream. Uh, spirulina, which gives it its nice green color. Some blueberries, pear, cinnamon, and collagen. And actually there's gelatin in here, gelatin powder. So it's a nice hefty protein shake and I'm drinking it because I was hungry. I've been on call since um, 9 a.m. and I had some coconut yogurt during the calls and now I'm having my smoothie just to give my body enough protein so that I don't have sugar cravings, which is what we're going to talk about today, sugar and how it's evil and how it's literally just as addictive as like heroin or cocaine. Let me take a sip of this and let's get into it. Everybody has um, sugar cravings, I think, for the most part. And especially if we don't eat a balanced diet or get the right nutrients in our diet, we crave sugar. We crave sugar because it's the easiest and quickest form of energy our body can use. So typically if we're not eating a balanced diet, getting enough fat and enough protein and then getting the right nutrients in our diet, like from supplements, we will crave sugar. And you know you have a sugar issue or I should say you know you're not getting enough nutrition or absorbing or digesting your food properly if you crave sugar after a meal. So when you crave something sweet after a meal, it's it's a clear cut sign, you know, to me in the clinic or when I work with anyone online that if they tell me that they need something sweet after every meal, um, to me it's a clear cut sign that they're not, not either absorbing their nutrients properly or they're not eating a balanced enough diet. And so the body is then saying at the end of that meal, I didn't get enough nutrition here and I need more fuel to get through the day. So give me sugar and, and it'll make, you know, it'll make me function better. But really when you're craving sugar, you need protein. So, um, you know, I think it's something like, you know, some some high number of people that are addicted to sugar, like 70% of people or something like that actually have these this need, right, to give their body sugar um, after meals or all day long to get through the day. And, and it makes sense. Sugar has an effect on the brain similar to like cocaine or heroin and causes, you know, a whole neurotransmitter effect. I think dopamine is the main neurotransmitter it affects. And basically creates an addictive uh, cycle. So you have the sugar, and then what that causes is your blood sugar to spike. You feel good for a little bit, then you crash. Then you need more sugar to get you back up again, right? And so it just creates this addictive tendency. And, you know, like a drug does to an addict, you know, sugar does the same thing of it kind of, you know, that dopamine reaction at like, soothes you, it feels so good, it like runs through your bloodstream and you, you feel high from it, so it creates a very cyclical addiction, and, and truly the only way to kick the addiction is to, you know, typically go cold turkey on sugar. So, um, you know, what, the signs I, I usually look for with someone I'm working with is, like I said, they'll tell me that they crave sugar after a meal, they crave something sweet. Um, or they're eating lots of like white flour, um, you know, like bagels and croissants and, you know, um, granola bars, cereal, stuff like that as, as their meals and they're not getting enough protein. And so what you see then is this real crash. They usually get, um, they, they tend to have anxiety issues. Most, um, all the people that I deal with that have blood sugar issues or sugar issues, um, sugar craving, sugar addiction, they all have anxiety, most of them. They typically have some sleep disturbances, whether it's insomnia or just um, restless sleep or where they're up several times throughout the night. Um, 
And they get that, that afternoon crash. Like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, they literally like hit a wall and they need caffeine or sugar to pick them back up. That tells me right there, blood sugar is not stable. And so what I need to do is teach them how to stabilize their blood sugar. And it's, it's fairly easy, but one of the things that you have to do is stop having added sugar. So in my first book, Chill Out and Get Healthy, which do I have a copy of here? I do. Let me grab it. Um, I should. This poor book doesn't get all the attention that the last book, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, gets. But this is my first book, Chill Out and Get Healthy, Live Clean to Stay Strong and Be Sexy. Um, I have a whole chapter in here dedicated. Um, it's called Sugar is Evil, Soy Sucks, and Bigger is Not Better. Um, and in here, I talk about basically, you know, sugar, how much we're getting as a society, um, added sugar, things like high fructose corn syrup, crystalline fructose, table sugar, cane sugar, sucrose corn syrup, um, are in everything. Every processed packaged food you can think of, all the way down to that like healthy yogurt you're eating to get probiotics, probably has some added sugar. So, your goal to kick your sugar habit is to avoid all things that have added sugar. My general recommendation is to stay below 10 grams of sugar a day, which is about, I think, two teaspoons. Um, since writing this book, I think I've gotten a little stricter on sugar because I see how intense the, the um, addiction is. But, so, I, you know, and here it's like one can, what is it? Um... Right. I was telling this story about vitamin water. So this was a patient that came to me. She was drinking vitamin water. She came to me for anxiety and insomnia. Um, and we were doing her intake, and she was sitting there drinking a, a container of vitamin water because she thought it was healthy, and she was getting her vitamins. And I asked her, I said, do you get a lot of sugar? And she said, no, I don't eat sugar at all. I said, read that label. And then she looked, and she goes, oh, my gosh, it has 13 and a half grams of sugar. Is that bad? And I said, well, read the full label. How many servings are in that bottle? Two servings. So... One can or one bottle of vitamin water, right, healthy water, had um, 30, what was it? Oh, yeah, for the total, it was two and a half servings, right? 32 and a half grams of sugar. That's outrageous. And that's why we as a society have sugar addictions, because everything is loaded with sugar. So that vitamin water has just as much sugar as a can of Coke, you know, and if you're not trying to drink soda because it has too much sugar, you should watch your other beverages. So, here's what I say in the book. Refined concentrated sweeteners like high fructose corn syrup, crystalline fructose, overwhelm the digestive system. Um, and then this prevents us from properly absorbing our nutrition from our food. And so then it basically creates an addiction because you have a lot of sugar. It overwhelms the system. You can't digest the nutrition from the rest of your food, and then you get that crash, and so then you need more sugar to pick it back up. And then literally the body becomes completely addicted to the sugar. Um, Beth, I'll get to that question in a second. Um, but listen to this. Um, sugar consumption in 1999 was 158 pounds a person, and that's 30% higher than it was in 1983. And then now it's probably another 20% higher than that. So we consume a shitload of sugar, and we really shouldn't. So most of us know these days, you know, especially if you're following me, you're, you're health conscious and you're aware, but you know, sugar has a major impact on kind of everything in our body, from, like Beth asked, like the immune system to general inflammation. So if you want to feel better and heal any condition, um, all the way up to cancer, right, the most serious of them all, you need to cut sugar. Um, a doctor that that I've worked with in the past, one of his favorite things to say is that sugar feeds cancer. So if you are a patient that has cancer, you literally have to avoid sugar at all costs. And the only things you should be eating, which is what I recommend for everyone to eat, is just lots of protein and lots of fat. And you'll notice that when you do that, you, your sugar addiction, your cravings and everything just start to go away. And sugar also can aggravate the immune system or affect the immune system in the same way. It causes inflammation in the body. It causes the body to become much more acidic, and it just doesn't function as well. In Chinese medicine, we see sugar as being a very, like, phlegmy substance. So it, it accumulates in the body and can cause 
you know, like cysts grow or anything that's like phlegmy or mucus. You know, people tend to get a lot of mucus when they have sugar or they get very phlegmy in their chest. They cough. They get like a post-nasal drip. Their ears get clogged. So if I ever see anybody that has any of those types of symptoms, typically I'm going to look at their diet and nine out of ten times they have a lot more sugar than they think they do. Um, and so in that way, it can also affect our immune system. It, it can cause more inflammation in the body so the immune system doesn't um, work as well, and that can cause a host of whether it's an autoimmune condition or just, you know, chronic colds, things like that, because your body basically isn't getting the nutrition that it needs. You know, instead you're giving it so much sugar, which is false nutrition, and so the body just isn't running on sustainable fuel, and so you're constantly taxing yourself and your body, and then the sugar causes the inflammation, compromises the immune system, you continue to get sick. So, so okay, most of us are addicted to sugar, let's be honest. Um, the only way to kick it is to learn how to balance your blood sugar. So, key things that you need to do, you need to eat protein first thing in the morning, like with, literally within 20 to 30 minutes of waking, some sort of protein. And I always say, like, the easiest is a couple almonds, like a handful of nuts, um, or sesame seeds if you can't have nuts, or, you know, a scoop of nut butter, half of a hard-boiled egg, something like that. And then go ahead and have your breakfast, you know, within that hour or two, which should also consist of protein. So, you know, eggs are great. You know, chicken apple sausage, you could do a smoothie like this, because I use the, the collagen in here, the um, vital protein gelatin, which has seven grams of protein for one scoop. So... And then I put the coconut cream in here. So this has got loads of fat and protein in here. And green veggies, which also help really regulate blood sugar. So the keys are that you're eating right upon waking, and then you're having protein with every meal, and you're eating every two to three hours, and there's some sort of protein. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, protein is a steak, too. It doesn't have to be like a 10-ounce steak. I mean, we're talking about like two to three ounces, the size of your palm of protein with every meal. And that you don't go longer than really three hours without food. Because the second you do that, your blood sugar drops. And then, boom, that craving will kick right in. And you want sugar. And you want it fast. you know. And so you're going to go for the first sugary thing you can get your hands on. Because it literally is an addictive substance. But if you're prepared. And if you um, eat your protein, that's not going to happen, right? So, so to think about it that way. So the number one way to kick the addiction is to eat protein literally first thing upon waking. Avoid sugar throughout your day. Don't even add it to your coffee, you know. Um, you know, Personally, I don't think I have any added sugar ever. Sometimes I'll have a little bit of raw honey with my yogurt or like maple syrup. So then you want to look at if you are doing sugar, what are the lower glycemic uh, sugars that are out there? And so lower glycemic means that it's more slowly turned into, you know, it takes longer to digest the sugar, basically. There's more fiber, if you will. Um, and then that doesn't cause such an intense spike in your blood sugar, which then leads to the, you know, perpetuates the addiction, if you will. So ideally, you know, it's, you're not doing table sugar. You're definitely not doing something like high fructose or even agave. Agave has the same effect on your blood sugar as high fructose corn syrup. So all those people that think agave is really um, spectacular for you, it, it's really not. You know, things like raw honey or maple syrup, better for you, for sure. But if you have a real serious sugar addiction, there should be no sugar in your diet, and there should definitely not be any artificial sweeteners as well. Um, you know, you see those people that, that do, like, three Splendas or something. So not only are the artificial sweeteners doing a number on your blood sugar, but they're highly toxic and um, just manipulated uh, chemicals that you're putting in your body that you really don't need and you shouldn't have. So, so eating protein upon waking and then making sure you're getting some protein in every meal, to every two to three hours, skipping the added sugar, um, and especially the artificial sweetener. So, you know, your diet soda drinkers. I mean, that's just so bad for you on so many levels, and, and I love you, but no more. It's, it's terrible for you, and there's, you know, it's not only not giving you any nutrition it's actually taking nutrients from your body in order to digest it so it, it it's doing a lot more harm and it, no good at all so cut the artificial sweeteners out no white sugar no table sugar at all cost you should avoid that and then also keep in mind that things like a bagel um anything that's got white flour crackers cereal 
that all turns into sugar the second you eat it. So your diet should mainly be protein, fat, vegetables, and some fruit. There are some sugar detoxes out there. I think there's a great book called The Sugar Detox, and they recommend no fruit even in like the first two weeks because you really need to train your body off of the sugar. And if you are a serious addict, then following something like that could really help. But, um, you know, in general, if you're just trying to beat those sugar cravings and that afternoon crash and just feel better throughout your day, then it's just, you know, you can have some fruit, but you limit it to the lower glycemic fruits like... Um, berries, melons, those tend to be the, the, the ones that don't spike your blood sugar as much. Okay. Um, so we're going to eat protein upon waking, and then every two to three hours, we're going to avoid added sugar in the form of white table sugar, but in the form of um, breads and pastas, anything that is, you know, that enriched flour, that white flour, that Wonder Bread kind of stuff. It's A, and this is an aside, um, all non-organic wheat products are not just bad for you on the sugar level because you turn into sugar the second you eat them, but they're loaded with pesticides, so they're very toxic to you as well. Um, all wheat crops in the U.S. get sprayed twice with Roundup, which is one of the most um, harmful pesticides that exist. And I just finished writing my third book on autoimmune conditions, and there's a clear-cut link between pesticide exposure and autoimmunity. And um, since we started introducing all these pesticides into our environment, the incidence of autoimmune conditions have almost quadrupled. And the science is out there. It shows the correlation. So if you are ever worried about autoimmunity, um, you really, really, really need to avoid pesticides, but particularly, you know, also the pesticides in, in the wheat. So... You know, it's another reason to avoid those white flowers. So not only does it um, lend it to a sugar addiction and unstable blood sugar, which lends itself to a host of diseases, but it really aggravates any autoimmunity. Um, and then, of course, if, if there's, like, cancer or anything like that that you're trying to heal from, which is also an autoimmune condition, um, sugar is supremely evil, and you need to avoid it at all costs. Um, yeah, the stevia, I don't know what Torv is. Sorry, but stevia has a different effect on blood sugar, um, and it has a lower glycemic coconut sugar as well. The They seem to have a, a less of an effect on the blood sugar, but again, keep in mind, you don't want to have those things like on an empty stomach. So if you're having coffee with some stevia in it to sweeten it up, you want to really be sure that that's not doing, you're not doing that on an empty stomach because you, the second you do that on an empty stomach, it still has an effect on your blood sugar and it has an effect on your cortisol, which if cortisol levels are low, then your body is craving something to help fix that and it typically craves sugar. So it creates that same cycle. So when you have your morning cup of coffee, you want to make sure you're eating it, you're having it with some sort of protein and or fat. I do mine bulletproof style, which... Um, is amazing. You know, I'll, I'll add um, either grass-fed butter or ghee or coconut oil, and then I also add some collagen peptides or, or gelatin, which um, Vital Proteins is a brand I like, so I'll do a scoop of that and a, a teaspoon or tablespoon of the fat, and um, I'll blend it. I have one of those hand mixer things, that's what I do, and um, it, that, doing it that way is really, it, it helps kind of stabilize, because coffee can have an effect on cortisol levels and even on blood sugar levels. So the fat and the protein really help stabilize um, you know, the, the substance so that it doesn't affect your blood sugar as much. What do I think of honey? Um, I talked about it before, but I think raw honey is, is fine in moderation, but and it has a different effect on the blood sugar. Um, but I would still keep it down to like one teaspoon a day, max two. However, if you are dealing with like a serious sugar addiction where you think about it all the time and you can't stop eating it and you binge on it and it's like your heroin, I would avoid all sweeteners at all costs for at least two weeks to a month to really retrain your body and so that it doesn't um, dip back into the addictive state. So, so again, our... our I'm, I'm, I think I've hit two so far. I want you to make sure you're eating protein upon waking and with every meal. And then I want you to avoid added sugar in the form of white flour, table sugar, and also artificial sweeteners because those are really going to trigger that sugar addiction. And then 
Thirdly, I want you to um, look at enhancing and optimizing your digestion because if you improve digestion, you will improve your capability of absorbing nutrition from your food and then your body's getting the nourishment it needs and the fuel it needs so then it doesn't crave the sugar, right? And then you won't get that 3 o'clock in the afternoon crash. And you won't get that need to have something sweet at the end of each meal. So one of the best ways to improve digestion is taking a daily probiotic or eating fermented foods on a daily basis. So things like sauerkraut, like made the proper way, where it's basically just some cabbage and sea salt typically is, is the proper way to ferment. Sometimes they have vinegars in them, but you, um, you know, I like the brand like Real Pickles and Hawthorne Valley. Those are really good sauerkraut, or you do a kombucha every day. That's like one of my favorite things. And kombucha does have a very little amount of sugar because you put sugar in it to feed the bacteria to grow, the mother. Um, it's called the mother in the, that makes the kombucha. But it's really low amounts of sugar, and it's not added sugar. It's, it's, it's like a byproduct of the fermentation process. So things like, um, or even yogurt you could do that has some probiotics in it, but make sure you get unsweetened yogurt. So there's no sugar added to the yogurt. And if you need to sweeten it up, you can add a little fruit. However, if you're dealing with a serious sugar addiction and you want to avoid fruit as well, then, then don't add the fruit. But you can add low glycemic fruit like berries or melons, and that should really help. Um, but another thing is to just take a daily probiotic supplement, and that can really help optimize digestion. And then that optimizes the absorption of the nutrition from your food, and then your body will crave less sugar because it's actually getting all the nutrients it needs to get through the day. Um, sleep. So there's definitely, um, let me see, hi Mel, um, I often see people who are on high protein, low carb diets limit their fruit and dried fruit intake because of the occurring sugar. What do you think of this? Yeah, no, that was what I was just touching on. Um, for sure, dried fruit is a no-no. I mean, I talk about that in, in all of my books. You know, you can do it in strict moderation, I think I say like once a month. And, and it's true, like for me, almost once a month, I probably have some dried mango but it's got no sugar added to it. It's literally just dried mango slices. Um, but mango has a lot of sugar in it, um, naturally occurring. So yeah, you know, limiting your fruit to the low glycemic fruit, I think is um, super important. I mean, my typical diet recommendations are protein, at least 80 grams a day, um, fat, you know, ideally like two to four tablespoons a day of a good healthy fat, plus even more if you want and then lots of vegetables and limited fruit. So maybe one serving of fruit a day of a low glycemic fruit. And I think most people really thrive on that kind of diet. Some people need more carbs. So, you know, doing things like like tubers, like, um, you know, fiber rich veggies, like sweet potatoes or parsnips or things like that can really help. Or even doing something like quinoa or rice, you know, some kind of grain to give you more carbohydrates will balance you. But really, it should be, you know, most mostly protein. And so probably, probably like, I don't know, 50% protein, 30% fat, 20% everything else um, in, your, in your daily diet. And is there a concern with yeast and kombucha? You know, I think some people say yes, others say no. Um, I don't tend to limit it in people that have yeasty symptoms. Um, I think it's more helpful than not. Um, I do limit, you know, more of like the, the added vinegars and things like that, and that your fermentation, things you're eating are really just made from, not from vinegar, that they're just fermented um, naturally with, with salt or um, like the probiotics in the kombucha. So, no, I don't have a concern for yeast with the kombucha, but I know... Some people will say zero fermented foods across the board, and that can work for some. I think, um, like anything, it's really individualized, because I have yeast people that do amazing on kombuchas, and then I have ones that it can aggravate their symptoms. So it's really tuning in and knowing your body and seeing how you feel. Um, okay, so going back, I want you to, the best way to kick the sugar addiction and get over it is, you know, that we're eating enough protein throughout the day, and we're starting our day off with protein. And then that we're avoiding added sugar and sweeteners, artificial sweeteners. We're optimizing our digestion with things like probiotic-rich foods. Um, what probiotic do I re recommend? I like uh, Megaflora. They're, they're 20 billion um, probiotic. 
Yeah, there's several good ones out there. Megaflora tends to be the one that I recommend in the clinic. Um, there's another one. Dr. Ack makes this one. I think it's called GI Renew, and it has prebiotics and probiotics in it and glutamine, which glutamine is another, I'll get to that in a second, but it's another supplement that can really help regulate a sugar addiction. So I, I always play around with different products because I like to try them and see how I like them and then recommend them. So currently we're taking the Dr. Ax. I think he just changed the name to Gut Repair or something like that. But it's got prebiotics, probiotics, and some other good um, amino acids that help heal the gut and help increase absorption of nutrition. So, so if you want just a regular straight up, probiotic. I think Garden of Life makes good ones. Um, Mega Foods makes good ones. Um, uh, what is the other brand? I'm blanking on it right now. But, you know, even Culturelle, I think, is a good one. There's Floor Store is another good one. Natrin makes some good ones. So, you know, ideally that you're getting something with 20 billion or more a day, um, depending on, on what's going on with you. And some people, if you've never taken probiotics before, then you should start slowly. So either take one every other day or every third day because it can cause some digestive upset at first, but it's regulating the system, and then eventually your body will um, acclimate to it. Um, so the other thing that's super important for you know regulating a sugar addiction or beating a sugar addiction is getting enough sleep because just like proper nutrition, if we don't get proper rest, our body isn't functioning. Functioning. I can't even talk functioning optimally and so it will crave sugar because it doesn't have the resources to get through the day so if you're not sleeping enough you will notice two things you crave are sugar and caffeine and that's a clear-cut sign that you need more sleep and then you need proper nutrition so the goal it should always be seven to eight hours a night every single night um, you can have a couple off nights but don't be one of those people that sleeps only four to five hours a week and then catches up on the weekend that is um, torturous to your body and does not set the stage for optimal health so make it your business to get more sleep and that if that means like having lights out time bed you know 10 p.m we're in bed electronics are off then that's what you got to do um you know last night i didn't get home from the clinic until almost 10 o'clock because i just had one of those long days and i could easily sit up on my computer for an hour and do work and stuff but it was like no i have a busy day tomorrow um off to bed I go, you know, and and that's that, right? You know, you, you do your best. I sent out a couple of emails to patients that were expecting to hear from me last night saying, you will hear from me tomorrow because I just got home from work. And you know what? So be it. If not everything got done, you know, I'm taking care of myself. I'm putting myself first. I'm prioritizing me and my health because who am I to anyone else if I don't take care of me, right? Um, and, okay, so then, then lastly, I think you know, taking certain supplements or, you know, in addition to eating enough protein and getting enough fat in, then make sure and taking the probiotics, you know, make sure that, you know, your your body is getting everything it needs. Because if there really is a true underlying sugar addiction, then you now have blood sugar issues and, and you probably need more support in regulating those. So um, glutamine is one thing that can really help with that. Um, but personally, what I like is bone broth on a regular basis. So although that's technically not a vitamin or a supplement, it's, it's got great sources of glutamine in it and all the amino acids that really help regulate your body and its blood sugar. So doing like four ounces of bone broth every day would be supremely awesome for your digestion. And then also it helps heal the irritation that has... Um, resulted in your gut as as a means of the sugar addiction or as a byproduct of the sugar addiction making sure you're getting plenty of omega-3 fatty acids in every day um, i prefer cod liver oil on a daily basis one teaspoon a day gives you plenty of um, good healthy omegas also vitamin a and vitamin d which are fat soluble vitamins so that helps your body regulate its um, not just blood sugar but all of its hormones so thyroid hormone to excuse me um to just you know regular female and male hormones but getting in at least um a teaspoon or you know what what is that i guess a couple thousand milligrams a day of um of fish oil or like i said i prefer cod liver oil but fish oil works well too just make sure it's well sourced and doesn't have mercury 
And then cinnamon, doing cinnamon on your, so I always add cinnamon to my coffee in the morning too, but cinnamon's a great way to stabilize blood sugar on a very natural um, level. And so getting good, either you can get one of those cinnamon grinders with the cinnamon sticks in there, or you get organic fresh ground cinnamon and add that to foods. Like I have it in my smoothie, I have it in my coffee. And so it's another way to keep blood sugar at bay. And when you crave the sugar after your meal, that's still a sign that you still need more help balancing your sugar. So I would then step back and how many grams of protein am I getting in a day? You know, there's some easy conversion charts online. Just Google like, what does 80 grams of protein look like in a day? And make sure you're trying to meet that, you know? And and also so here's an aside too. If you want to really lean down and um, be super fit, you should eat about a gram of protein per body weight that you are. And that will really help. And then guess what? All that protein, you're not going to be hungry for anything else. And you're definitely not going to crave sugar. And if you do need to give in to a sugar craving, I think um, a square or two of organic dark chocolate that's 72% or higher is fine. And in fact, you know, I had some on Tuesday at the clinic and it's yummy, tastes good, gets you through, you know, quells that sugar craving a little bit. But you know what I noticed too is I got a major sugar craving because, um, you guys have been following me. Last week, I put on like a webinar every single night, and I was kind of exhausted. And so Monday night was my last webinar, and then I had to wake up early and get into the city and work in the clinic for almost 13 hours and saw, you know, 18 patients. And by, you know, 6 p.m., I sent my assistant across the street to La Pan Quotidian and made her get me a thing of chocolate because that's what I needed to get through my day. So my body was basically saying to me, Amy, you are exhausted. You've kind of pushed your limits. You're burning the candle at both ends. And so right now I need sugar to get through the rest of the day. And, you know, to me, it was, it's just a cue that my body's saying, you better get home and get some sleep and really eat well the next couple of days because you need to recover from all the energy you've just put out. You know, so something to really think about when your body is craving that and it hasn't in a while, what is it that also is going on and how high are your stress levels? How much have you been sleeping? How have you been treating your body from a nutritional perspective? Um, so, you know, all these things to keep in mind. Um, and another thing that I find is really useful for sugar addictions or to help, you know, really regulate um, digestion and nutrient absorption is getting acupuncture on a regular basis. So, you know, obviously I'm an acupuncturist, huge fan of it, but at, there have been studies to show that acupuncture is wonderful at helping regulate blood sugar. And I've had many patients with um, pre-diabetes that, you know, through dietary changes and supplement recommendations, but also through acupuncture that we've gotten them from the pre-diabetes phase back to, you know, the blood sugar is totally fine, your glucose levels are normal, which is wonderful. Um, so... I think that's everything. To recap, I want you eating protein within the first 20 minutes of waking and then every two to three hours throughout the day. That your diet should mainly consist of protein, fat, vegetables, and um, very little very little fruit. And if you do do fruit, well, like one serving a day is fine. If you do do fruit, that is the low glycemic fruit. Avoid added sugar, white flour, bread, pastas, all that crap that's processed, um, and artificial sweeteners at all costs. Optimize digestion with something like fermented foods on a daily basis and or probiotics. Um, get enough sleep. And then that you're taking, you know, I think a good uh, daily dose of omega-3 fatty acids, that you know, you're getting some vitamin D in, that, you know, and adding cinnamon to things, which really helps I guess blood sugar. Um, so I have an eight-month-old who doesn't sleep well. That on top of postpartum anxiety has me craving sugar constantly. Exactly. But what you can do that's best for you is eat a ton of protein because that's what your body needs. And especially if you're breastfeeding and you are recovering from childbirth, which can take up, you know, more than a year to recover from, you need to eat a lot of protein. The more sugar you eat, the, you know, you're just, you're making it harder on your body to recover and heal. And you're also not allowing then your body to have balanced blood sugar, so then your sleep and your anxiety is going to be worse. Uh, always, one thing I say in the clinic is 90% of my anxiety and insomnia patients are actually blood sugar patients. Once I regulate their blood sugar with eating a good healthy diet that has a lot of protein and fat in it, um, the, all those symptoms go away. So 
do your best to, you know, follow these steps. And even though, you know, remember too, you know, I have um, a kid who's a year older than yours, but this too shall pass. Eventually they will start sleeping more and do what everyone says that you nap when the baby naps. Do not try to get everything done. Let things go. Laundry will get done eventually. Um, just, you've got to let things go. Let the house be messy and you nap, you know, and um, get your sleep where you can because you really need to recover and heal. And so you, you need to nourish your body on every level. Um, okay, guys. I think that's, I'm going to wrap it up here. Yeah, 113 because i got to get over to my secret Facebook group. My secret Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course students are waiting for me to go live and talk to them about some important fertility enhancing subjects. So I will see you guys all here next week, and um, we'll share with you that topic right before we go live. Okay. Have a wonderful day. If you are catching this later, just post some comments in the section below, and I will get back to you. Okay. Bye.